The Chinese government can keep Hu Jia quiet, but his echo won't die down. They pulled him off the human rights battlefield and threw him in prison. He was making too much noise calling for AIDS action, for environmental protection. The European Parliament pays him his due. In this year, this year, the political group Presidents have decided the Sakharov Prize for 2008 goes to Hu Jia as the representative of all the voices stifled in China and Tibet, as recommended by the External Affairs Committee. The Greens and Liberals put Hu up for the prize. Here is somebody who has worked in the job for which he is qualified, which is to be a lawyer, who has sought to defend human rights activists, and who has himself been physically attacked and imprisoned for the work of practicing his profession. That, surely, is something which ought to make the whole of the world sit up and say, what kind of society are we dealing with in China? The People's Republic convicted Hu of inciting the subversion of state power. He's been locked away. He started serving his sentence last December under conditions many say are arbitrary. Hu Jia is very ill in prison. He has kidney problems. The government threatens him, saying, if you appeal your sentence, you won't receive treatment for your illness. His wife is shut up at home. She's sometimes allowed out, sometimes not. She has an infant who's punished too. Hu Jia was condemned to spend three and a half years in prison, but we don't know how much time he will stay there. He is entirely at the mercy of the authorities. Those who know China well say this is quite common with the communist regime. Several non-governmental organizations in the European Union keep a close watch on human rights in the People's Republic. Working with Amnesty is this quantum physicist. Amnesty International, in the run-up to the Beijing Olympics, launched a campaign called Gold Medal for Human Rights, supporting defenders such as Hu Jia. But nothing has really changed in China. It remains deplorable that the police can easily put someone in prison for political reasons. No process is necessary. Even for several years' punishment in prison, a simple administrative warrant is enough. We also strongly regret that torture and abuse are still very widespread. Their daily routine in many prisons, especially in ethnic minority regions such as Tibet or Xinjiang. Furthermore, there are still far too many people condemned to death in China. More people are sentenced for execution each year in China than in all the other countries of the world put together. The EU's relations with Beijing have taken a turn towards glacial in the past few months. The Chinese cancelled their annual summit with the Europeans this December over the bloc's welcoming of Tibet's spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. That, to them, was a slap in the face. The Chinese find that was a rude act, something not done between friends. But we've already had discussions like this. The Chinese don't like it either that the European Parliament talked about Tibet before. They feel misunderstood. They find they're not being judged in a balanced way. When we talk to the Chinese, they explain their points of view. We understand them, and I respect their opinion. The Chinese are hardening their tone with the European Parliament, whose members are challenging Beijing's totalitarian rule by defending their recognition of Hu Jia. All political groups who were thinking of supporting him received letters and emails and in some cases telephone calls as well from the embassy. The Chinese find this an embarrassment. I regret that. I wish that the Chinese government would recognize that with economic liberalization, which they have encouraged, will necessarily come demands for greater political freedom. And if they really want a strategic partnership with Europe, perhaps they should drop the old communist bullying tactics, drop the gulags and the beatings and so on.
Well after the Beijing Olympics slogan, One World, One Dream, has faded, the MEPs are also aware that restrictions of expression in China are still nightmarish. The Chinese signed a number of commitments with the International Olympic Committee about how they would respect human rights more in the run-up to the Olympic Games. In fact, we saw more and more dissidents put in jail because they didn't want to be embarrassed at the opening ceremonies. Since the Games, they have made noises that suggest that they're going to be a little more liberal, but nothing in practice seems yet to have changed. Hu Jia is among many online journalists journalists imprisoned in China. For speaking out through the internet, he was first kept under house arrest for a year. With his wife, he videoed the guards. Amnesty says the Sakharov Prize is encouragement for all the country's dissidents. This is a signal to the human rights defenders in China that the prize is a signal for everyone defending human rights in China, that their struggle is internationally recognized. And this message is really hitting home in China. Pressure is mounting on the government to free Hu Jia. Amnesty insists far more has to be done, saying the Red Giant's economic influence and place in the UN Security Council are no excuse for letting Beijing get away with abuses. We're asking for a consistent policy from Europe towards China, with the stress placed on human rights. Until now, there have been too many different strategies from the member states, but no common European Union strategy concerning China. We object above all that human rights are not placed in the forefront. The subject is mentioned, but given a lesser role in negotiations with China. Aber es spielt insgesamt nur eine eher untergeordnete Rolle. Leider sind wir Unfortunately, because of our economic dependency, we show that suffering people are not really that important to us. That's pretty sad. The Sakharov Prize presents Europe's more pugnacious side to China. It has affected policy already, but up till the last minute it was not known if Zheng Yinjian would be allowed to come to Europe to accept the honor for Hu Jia.